Welcome to the TTT News Special. Thank you so much for being a part of it. I'm DK Rasta. The sports company of Trinidad and Tobago Limited unveiled their Trinidad and Tobago Sport Participation Survey 2021 earlier this year in April. We are joined by one of the chief architects, head of partnerships and alliances, Karen Serret, and the senior manager of corporate communications, Kevin Garcia. They join us to update us on the progress of that survey. So, Karen, I want to jump in with you. Thank you for making making the time. Give us a little history of the survey, please. Okay. Uh, thanks for having us, DK. So, uh, last year, um, you know, we, we undertook an exercise to, to quantify the impact that the sport industry has on the GDP of Toronto Tobago. So we have started looking at different, different parameters, right, from both a financial and uh, from a quantitative and a qualitative standpoint. One of the things we realized will be key to that is understanding the, the participation figures of the general public, you know, what people are doing, you know, what, what sort of physical activity and recreation they, they, they like to do. So, when we realize that this is something that we need to undertake, we partnered with the Trent Tobago Coalition of Service Industries and we set about devising this survey that is meant to bring to market to talk to people to say, What do you do? How do you exercise? And then the idea is for us to now take that data, collate it, look at the, you know, look, look, at, look and see what it says, and then make decisions based on that. What kind of decisions you're thinking? thus far without going too deeply into it that you need to be making because of the data that you've now gotten so i mean so ideally what what we would like to do is, is you know once we've collected this data we're going to share it with a lot of the major stakeholders so for instance uh, like uh, an example I, I like to draw is if after the, the the data is collated there's one of the questions that asks what sport would you like to do if it is that we realize that in tobago in, I don't know, in Castara, we realize that some of the, the respondents say, you know, we really want to learn to play volleyball. We have an understanding now of this is, this is a need in that part of the country, and now we're going to put things in place, share with the stakeholders that you be trying to be a volleyball duration, you be THA, and say, listen, there's a need, let's now develop this and see how best we can create an opportunity for the persons there to learn and play the sport, because at the end of the day, what we want <clears throat> as sport company and, and just generally larger as the government of Toronto is the Ministry of Sport and Community Development is to have more people active. You know, one of the main key, the key areas of the national sport policy is total participation. So all of this is meant to work towards that. And Kevin, let me pull you in now. Thank you. How important is it or what's the significance of being able to partner with uh, an organization like the Coalition of Service Industries to be able to do this sort of initiative? So you have two uh, companies, two organizations that are from Trinidad and Tobago able to see about the business of Trinidad and Tobago. Well, let me just thrust um, towards the uh, achievement of a mandate at the sport company is partnership. So the TTCSI is just one of the many partners that we have been working with in order to achieve that mandate. The TTCSI, as you know, they are one of the premier data collection um, entities in Trinidad and Tobago, and by extension, through their affiliates in the Caribbean. So getting this partnership to do just this survey, among other things, is going to redound to us not only achieving the mandate of Sports for All, but making it easier for persons to access and know what they need to access for sport in Trinidad and Tobago. And in terms of going forward with that conversation of building the partnerships, looking at the mandate of Sport TT, uh, the fact that you are moving from a point of specific data, does that change the game, the narrative? How does that affect your operations? Well, you know, data is a lot better than anecdotal. So whereas people may say that they, as Kyron would have alluded to, they, they would like to have something in a particular area, surveys like these enable us to now quantify that sort of interest and decide where we're going to put um, not just human resources, but also funding into providing those services to supply those needs. All right. Kyron, how, what form did the, did, the, did the survey take? And I ask that because sometimes you may hear loud voices, so you think those voices represent the general feelings or sentiment. How did this survey go about gathering information? 
So because we, we uh, attempted to do this in a, in a, you know, try in time, um, we have a lot of restrictions with um, the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, the survey was, was completely done um, virtually. So we would have done a link via SurveyMonkey and then, um, so there's a website link on SurveyMonkey and then we would have shared it to our different stakeholders, our different partners, we would have shared it via WhatsApp. And we're hoping that the, the digital medium, although it's not, you know, ideal, you know, we should ideally have a more comprehensive, both paper-based and digital, but we, we're working as best as we can in these circumstances. And I'm wondering though, and like you said, we're dealing, we're doing the best with what we have at this point in time, but do you see the potential for gaps? Because I can see some people who are more uh, Akura, mm -hmm. able to jump online, they do it at a moment's notice, very different from Tanti or uncle who will have their views, but they may not have seen or they may not have um, realized that this survey is out for them to take part in it. Yeah, no, no that, is, that, is, that is just a, a risk we, we, we acknowledge. Um, it's a, you know, something that we know we have to deal with and we, we mitigate as best as possible. We do understand and we do appreciate that even in this first iteration of the survey, um, it may not be perfect. Um, we are doing the best that we can to get as much participation for this first one. And then the idea is for this to be a year on year engagement so that, you know, we have a baseline and then say, okay, um, next year we want to get a total um, participation of, I don't know, maybe 10% of the, of the country. And then all the gaps that we would have realized that we have, you know, been, um, I guess, privy to this year, we try to plug them so that we could improve next year. So we are aware that, you know, it's not going to be an ideal circumstance. Um, we hope that, you know, the pervasiveness of things like WhatsApp, even among that demographic that you, you mentioned, I think they have, they have shown that they are, they are open around with it, um, whether or not they participate in it is, a, is the next thing. But, you know, um, that is the circumstance and, and we are doing the best. But take me through the structure of the survey, please, in terms of like what kind of, what, what are the range of questions that the survey would have uh, encompassed? Okay, so in terms of the range of questions, they would have started out, you know, like normal demographic, you know, age, um, what part of the country you're from, what type of, how do you consider yourself in terms of sport participation? If you're a professional, if you're just recreational, what types of sport do you engage in? Uh, what sport types of sport, or not even just sport, but physical activity? What sport or physical activity would you like to engage in? Um, what would you, do you use um, facilities? Do you use government facilities? What do you think about the facilities? So <clears throat> it's, it's from, it's meant to capture any and any and everybody. You know, sometimes it's a, it should be a little more focused, but what we would like to do is to find out. So if it is you have, I don't know, a neighbor, 70 years old and, and he or she, they like, they just like to walk. You know, we want them to be able to say, listen, in terms of um, frequency, I, I take a 15 minute walk three times a week. So we understand this as being a mode of exercise that people usually do. If it is that somebody says, okay, cool, you know, we just like yoga, right? We want to be able to capture that. If it is that, um, I don't know if you all remember when the, it was announced that there's no more um, pet match football, you know, the outcry on, on social media, especially on, on, on places like Twitter, everybody was up in arms, you know, but we want, we want to be able to capture that data to say, okay, this is how many people play pet match football or cricket or whatever, so that, you know, we have an idea of what that sector of the industry is. So it's meant to capture those who might swim with blue dolphins to those who might just take uh, a football sweat in the savannah on a Sunday. I know. Kevin, you spoke about having the data and using that to drive policy, drive future actions, much different from anecdotal information. Uh, with the results as they, as they've come in thus far, have you all seen some of that data kind of knocking the anecdotal information out of the park or saying, okay, we're refuting it? Well, the survey is still open. Um, it's going to be running until the end of July. Uh, so I'll, I'll, hold, I'll hold that comment for now. But just to reinforce something that Karen would have said, sometimes you're playing, you're engaged in a particular physical activity that you don't know is a sport. So some of the questions we would have, do you engage in physical activity for social or health benefits? So we're trying to ensure that we capture persons who do not think that they would benefit from having facilities upgraded, from having spaces created for them to continue to, to recreate and, and engage in whatever in their mind they think sport is. 
All right, and with that, we take a short break. We return speaking about the business of sport and looking at the survey as in progress by Sport TT. Stay with us. Welcome back. We are speaking with Kevin Garcia and Kyron Serrett of the sports company of Trinidad and Tobago. Now, Kevin, you raised a point just before we went to the break, and it seems as though the way that you say something can have different sorts of meaning. So using that language in a way that people realize that they are included, how important is it to try to get as much information about the work of the facilities, the activities, to take, to take the conversation or actions forward? Well, keep in mind, um, let's look for, even though it doesn't fall under our remit, but let's, let's look at the, the savannah. You may have people gathering in spaces, doing the, the, the fat mat sweat, and they don't have toilet facilities. They don't have facilities for water to wash their, their face, you know, that, 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 that kind of thing. Um, the clean up the sweat after. So we are trying to ensure that we have an idea where, what, and why people are engaging in these activities so that it's not only going to redound to our benefit when we're looking for future development, but it's also going to benefit the national governing bodies of sport because they will have an idea for people who have casual and serious interests in the, in the, in the, um, in the sporting activities over which they govern. I like the fact that you spoke about future development. And it's kind of hard to think of future development outside of the pandemic right about now. But is there a focus looking at the, the changes or the, the pivots that would have needed to take place during the pandemic as, to, as opposed to a time where things will be a lot more relaxed? And I ask, this to, I ask this to both of you gentlemen, either one of you can answer. Sure. Well, I'll tell you uh, that since last year and continuously since we have been um, engaging the NGBs, in knowledge building workshops. Uh, we paused for two months, but we have been trying to teach them how to get their house in order so that it's not just us trying to find out how we can um, enable development in the spaces, but also how can we enable development um, within the sporting bodies so that, I mean, it might sound fanciful, but everything can pivot simultaneously um, towards sport for all. And when you say NGBs, this is national governing bodies, right? National governing bodies of sport, yes, correct. All right, now, and I want to go back to the point of having data, and I'll ask you, Chiron, uh, going back to the point of being able to make a, a full, more hard decision or a decision that is based in data. Sometimes when we hear sports, we think everything is fanciful and we don't necessarily take in mind stakeholders. Uh, who are some of those stakeholders that we may not think about at first blush? Also, we may be thinking about the governing bodies, we may be thinking about individuals, but who are some of those that we don't necessarily think about? Well, I mean, the, the, the good thing about this is um, you find that sport has a myriad of stakeholders. So you, you, you speak about the, the governing bodies of sport, um, you speak about the, the government in terms of those who manage the facilities, local government, um, who will manage the, the different grounds, the regional corporations. We have the Ministry of Health because, <clears throat> as you are aware, um, Ministry of Health will do their, their service with regards to um, non-communicable non diseases and so on. So, I mean, this is also an opportunity for us to partner with them in terms of that data collection because activity, quantifiable activity is going to um, we have a correlation to that. Um, another, another stakeholder that we, we drew this exercise is um, the community development, you know, thankfully the Ministry of Sport and Community Development is one, but now we are able to engage them closer because we are now able to get to the communities to find out exactly what is going and then now everyone is at the same table determining how are we going to just generally improve and get more numbers. Um, you mentioned with, with TTCSI being a major stakeholder to assist us in the data collection and then, you know, just, just generally we have other I guess what you would consider secondary stakeholders that we are all trying to include um, so that we could work together and get um, as, much, as much data as possible. Now, if an instrument like this survey is part of the solution, what was that thing, the straw that broke the camel's back or the thing that just made it so apparent that 
something like this was needed. So was that thing that gave it that final push to say, we need a survey to find all this information? I, I think, um, I, I, don't, I don't want to say this is that holding cameras back. What I would say is, you know, we, we acknowledge that just generally data collection is not something that, um, you know, we, we do well, right? And I'm just, just being honest, you know, it's not an indictment on anyone. We understand that, you know, for us to be able to, to quantify our worth, it is important for us to take, to take this direction. And it, it's, it's just, a, it's, it's going to be a mechanism for sport to be able to say, hey, you know, we are not, we are no longer just um, fun and games or just, you know, looking at the high end. This is a full understanding of the industry. We could quantify in terms of how many people are, are participate at certain levels, what it is they do, um, how many people are involved, how many people are, are, are employed by the industry, how many people volunteer, because that's also part of the, the metrics that we want to get, you know, how many people volunteer their time towards making sport happen. And providing this service to the wider populace so it's it's that acknowledgement that listen like we, we, we've not done this exercise before now is as good a time as any for us to start and now take it from here moving forward and just um continually improve oh, mr garcia uh, mr serrett spoke about using both qualitative and quantitative uh metrics or questions to get data uh does the fact that that kind of triangulation is to what end? And I ask that because is how does that help you impact past just hard data versus anecdotal interacting with potential partners, engaging with other bodies or groups? Well, the sports companies always and will always be engaged in evidence-based decision making, um, evidence-based conversations for evidence-based results we have to always remember when we engage in something there has to be an outcome that can be specifically measured or against a benchmark which is what we're doing here with this survey and then as we plan for future we can continue looking at that benchmark and looking at improvements because we're engaged in evidence-based conversations and evidence-based decision making so it's all about having those figures being crunched and it's all about looking at the successes based on those figures and you know not on how i feel if you look at how these athletes for example train they don't train until they feel that they're ready they're trained based on a very specific scientific regime so that they know that they can peak a few months ahead based on the on the stats and figures that they put into their training so we are doing it similarly and it'd be remiss of me in this minute that we have to not ask how people can, or persons can access the survey. So where do we find it? Where do we fill it out? Sure, you can go to any of our social media sites, Sportco, on Facebook, uh, Instagram, and Twitter. Or you can go directly to the uh, SurveyMonkey website, surveymonkey.com slash r slash sports participation 2021. All right, so we want to thank you very much, gentlemen for making the time and putting in the work so that we have a place of information to step forward to as opposed to a feel because we've done so many things on feelings from time to time and uh, not necessarily most ideal but thank you for putting in the work and we want to thank you on behalf of the entire news team for tuning in to the TTT News Special. Have a good one. <laughs>